Hey guys, Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be covering how to calculate the bond order when you have the molecular orbital diagrams. There are two ways to calculate the bond order. One way is by using Lewis structures, and the other way is by using MO or molecular orbital diagrams. We covered how to calculate the bond order using loose structures in the previous video, so we're just covering the sec te second technique in this video. So quickly, bond order is just the number of bonds that exist between two atoms. For example, if you have the bond order one is a single bond, bond order two means you have a double bond, and bond order three means you have a triple bond. And you can also have partial bond orders, like if you had 1.5, then that means that there's one and a half bonds that exist between two atoms. And that case is possible whenever you are dealing with resonance. In terms of other concepts you need to know regarding bond order, the higher the bond order, the stronger the bond is, which also means that the bond is shorter because bond strength and bond length are inversely related. And lastly, the more stable the compound is because uh, when you have stronger bonds, there's more energy that's released when you form them, so that causes the molecule to be more stable, which means it has less potential energy. When you're dealing with MO diagrams, the way to calculate bond order is using this equation. Bond order between two atoms is equal to the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So how, how can you tell what's a bonding electron and what's a anti-bonding electron? I have two molecular orbital diagrams right here. If you're not too familiar with them, I'll just quickly explain what you're looking at. So on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, you can see the individual atoms, and then in the middle is the molecule. So you can take a boron and another boron and came together to form a B2 molecule. So you have your atomic orbitals right here, your S's, your P's, and then also your atomic orbitals for this boron on the right-hand side. And in the middle, um, it's the molecular orbitals. So that's th those are the orbitals that are formed when the two atomic orbitals overlap. So you can just think of the molecular orbitals as the orbitals belonging to the molecule. Now in terms of molecular orbitals, you have bonding molecular orbitals and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. And the way to differentiate which one is bonding and anti-bonding is to just look for the star. If there is a star, then that means it's anti-bonding. So I'll just write that right here. Star means it's anti-bonding. And then when there's no star, it's bonding. So knowing that, we can now use this formula to calculate the bond order between the B2 molecules. So let's start with the number of bonding electrons. That will just be 1, 2 three, four, um, yep, so we have four bonding electrons, and then anti-bonding electrons are going to be the ones of the star, so one anti-bonding, two anti-bonding, so four minus two, then divide that by two, so that'll be two divided by two, what's the group of your bond order one? So that means there is a single bond between the borons in, uh, between the two borons in the B2 molecule. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here we are looking at the molecular orbital of NO, so we have nitrogen on the left and oxygen on the right, the, and here are the respective atomic orbitals and the respective atomic orbitals for oxygen. Then to determine the bond order, we're once again going to use the formula of bonding electrons minus anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So let's count up the number of bonding electrons. And that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So pretty much I just counted the one, the arrows in the middle that don't have any stars next to them. Now for the anti-bonding, let's just use a different color for this one. Anti-bonding, you see this one has a star, so that'll be one, two, and three. So then the equation, the number of bonding electrons was eight, because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, minus three, divided by two, and that'll give you five over two, so it has a bond order of two and a half. Now on the test, you might also be asked to draw the molecular orbital diagrams or to calculate the bond order of a molecule that has um, a charge. So what if we were to calculate the the bond order for NO minus? Well, we know that if there's a negative charge, it means that there's just one extra electron. So we're just going to add an extra electron right here. And then we can recalculate it. And you see that we add added a extra um, electron in the star orbital, so that's going to be anti-bonding. So then that means instead of 8 minus um, 3, it's 8 minus 4 divided by 2, so it'll be 4 over 2, so 2. So that means by having that extra electron, the bond order went down, meaning this the NO molecule is less state, the NO minus is less stable than the NO, because this one had a bond order of 2, and it had a bond order of 2.5. And then we talked about how 
higher bond order means it's more stable. So then this one is going to be more stable than that one. And that's it. That's how you can calculate the bond order if you have the molecular orbital diagrams.